hi, this is Dr. Matsko, and this is a brief video on uh, just doing a few calculations rega with regards to photons. Um, uh, first, the one thing I want to emphasize, um, which I think is, is, I have not yet found anywhere else that emphasizes this, uh, but I have found this as to be a very common mistake among students in the past, so I, that's why I want to make sure it's extra clear. Um, when we do quantum um, or any kind of physics, I know for the next week or two weeks, uh, there are two units of energy that are very common. I mean, there's joules, uh, which we, um, which is what we're familiar with, right? Joules, J, um, right? Watts is joules per second. Uh, but in quantum, actually something that comes up a lot is electron volts. Uh, so shown as EV, and those are actually uh, uh, very common in quantum. Actually, uh, um, I, I, I use mostly electron volts, uh, and so I want to make sure that you're comfortable with converting and, com and that you know the relationship between them. Um, the biggest uh, place where this comes up that I've found causes the most uh, confusion is when you're trying to... Um, to uh, convert from energy to uh, voltage, right? They have very different um, equations when you're going from voltage to energy, right? And as we learn from, I don't know, chapter 22 or something like that, chapter 21, right? Energy equals energy equals voltage times charge, right? Charge. And here, when we're talking about quantum, we're going to say that's the charge of one electron. Um, now, uh, for joules, right, we learned that you take one coulomb times one volt and you get one joule. Very straightforward. That's what we've done previously. Um, but here in quantum, uh, we're going to use one electron, right? And that's just, instead of doing whatever amount of um, coulombs an electron is, uh, instead, you have one electron is just one. It's not 1.6 times 10 to the minus 9. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Uh, but one electron times one volt equals one EV. And so you can imagine, right, if you were talking about the charge of an electron, right, if you were doing coulombs, you'd have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times one volt, and you'd get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And no one wants to be carrying around this 10 to the minus 19. Um, and so that's why when we're talking about one electron or two electrons, and EVs are, prefer are preferable because it's a much smaller unit. And so if you're trying to convert directly from an energy in electron volts with energy in joules, and I think I just covered uh, part of that. Uh, uh, uh energy in joules, you just take the energy in joules and you divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the 19, 19, which is the elementary charge. Elementary charge, right? So uh, energy in electron volts, you can convert to energy in joules by dividing by the elementary charge in coulombs, uh, or you can have energy in joules equals the element, the energy in electron volts multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to 19. Anyways, you should uh, be comfortable with this. Um, but uh, with all of these questions, um, at least on the exam, I'm going to let you answer in either electron volts or joules, whatever you prefer. Again, I have a preference for doing electron volts uh, when we're talking about quantum, including the photoelectric effect, uh, but you're welcome to do things in joules. And actually, I don't remember what the Wiley Plus, the homework, has you do. Um, one thing to make sure uh, that you're careful with, again, this is a very important mistake or common mistake. Um, if you have Planck's constant, that's not how you spell Planck. Planck has a C. Um, Planck's constant H. There. Are you can have the number in units of joule seconds, or you can have the number in units of electron volt seconds. So make sure you know clearly whether you're working with electron volts or joules, and depending on what units you're working with, there are different values for H. All right, similar to how G equals 9.8 meters per second squared, if instead you wanted to work with 
I don't know, miles per hour squared or something like that, um, then it's a totally different value. All right, so uh, that's where H is. So um, I recommend you just have both numbers written on your crib sheet. Um, uh, but again, you can choose to prefer to work just in electron volts or just in joules, and you should be fine either way. All right, so I have a couple of problems to work through. Um, this is not photoelectric effect. This one's just photons, right? Let's imagine uh, you're given a one milliwatt laser. Okay, milliwatts, right? Watts are joules per second. Milliwatt equals one well, milli, 0 0.001 uh, joules per second. Right, so that's a power, right? Um, uh, let's see, one milliwatt laser emits a lambda equals 550 nanometers uh, monochromatic light, so it's all the same wavelength. How many photons are emitted per second? All right, so, uh, uh, so this is all based off of the foundation of do we understand what power is, right? Power is energy per second equals energy per time. but you can also think of it as energy per rate. And that's what I have written up there. Power equals energy times rate, and photons per second is rate. So basically we want to find out our rate of photons per second. Um, so we want to find out the energy, right? We're going to find out energy per photon And then we're going to get photon per second. And then that's going to be energy per second. Oh, photon per time here. Energy per time. Sorry, I don't know if you can actually read that. But anyways, but we'll work on it. All right, so energy per time. So we're given power already. Our power is 0 0.001 joules per second. Let's see. Energy per photon, energy per photon, sorry, is uh, HF. Uh, and we're given lambda, so we got to um, figure out F equals, what, C over lambda? All right, we're going to convert. All right, we have C equals F lambda, and so F equals C over lambda, and so E equals HC over lambda. All right, so um, let's see. Our energy per photon is going to be uh, H. Here, I'll just write H C over lambda photon divided by time. Right, and that's actually what we're looking for. Okay, let's plug in our H and C. Okay, we're working in joules, and so we're going to use... Uh, that value of h, the 6, 6 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, that's nasty, times c, uh, c meters per second, right? I didn't write that on here, but it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, and then divide by lambda, right? Lambda uh, also has to be in meters, right? We're working meters, so that's... 550 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. All right, craziness. And then we have our uh, uh, photon over overtime. That's what we're solving for. All right, so our photon divided by a second is going to equal 0 0.001. And then we've got to take this whole thing and divided by the other side, um, and so we get 550 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8. All right, and now I'm going to type all of that onto my computer to uh, try to figure out 0 0.001 times 550 times 10 to the minus 9 
divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8. That's really long. Okay. Check it. And I get 2.7 seven seven times ten to the plus fifteen uh, photons per second to the fifteen okay so that's a lot that's a lot of photons uh, one milliwatt laser is about the strength of a laser pointer if you went out and bought a laser pointer it would probably be around milliwatts and so you're getting ten to the fifteen photons per second um, I think that's about right. That's a that's probably what I would expect. There's a lot of photons, right? I and mean, that's why you don't see single photons, right? There's that many photons. It looks basically like a continuous beam. All right, put a big square on that. All right, so that's a practice of calculating photon energy and rate and power. All right, and then I have um, uh, another question here that's a, specifically about the photoelectric effect. Right, I know I assigned uh, their videos uh, about the photoelectric effect. Uh, this is just doing one of the calculations. Right, if the surface of a metal slab is illuminated by light of wavelength lambda equals 530 nanometers, then the stopping potential for electrons emitted from the uh, metal is 0.59. Okay, so we have a lambda, right? We have stopping potential so you know this is photoelectric effect or if it's anything about surface of a metal illuminated by light we know it's photoelectric effect photoelectric which means we're very likely going to use the photoelectric equation right the textbook specifically calls it the photoelectric equation hf equals k max plus phi right so the stopping potential for electrons emitted from the metal is 0.59 V, so that's V stop. All right, uh, so this is a multi-part question. I've broken it up into different slides just to give you more space. Um, the first slide, what is the photon energy of the light of this wavelength lambda equals 530 nanometers? All right, um, right so I have, uh, again, E equals HF equals hf equals hc over lambda right with that conversion uh, you're going to be using that so much i think it might be worthwhile just to have an equation that just says that just says energy of a photon is hc over lambda that would be easier um, but it's a simple algebra to do uh, so let's see and then from here again we have two choices for H and we want to decide which units to work in you could either work in joules or in electron volts um, for photoelectric effect I prefer to work on electron volts because it makes it easier to convert between V stop and K max um, but let's see uh, I think it asks me for the work function right what is the work function and you can answer that in electron volts or joules is okay All right so um, so it's just up to you to choose whether you want to do electron volts or joules I'm going to do electron volts um, as my preference alright so uh, we got electron volts going on so I'm going to use this H alright so I'm going to use this time 4.14 times 10 to the minus 15 as H C is the same 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second uh, divided by uh, wavelength in meters so 530 times 10 to the minus 9 yes 10 to the minus 9 alright now let's plug that all in 4.14 times 10 to the minus 15 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 530 times 10 to the minus 9 and we get uh, 2.34 eV. So again, this actually emphasizes why I prefer using, or another reason why I prefer using electron volts when we have when we're dealing with quantum, 
right? Because we're doing with single digits, right? What's the energy of a photon? 2.34. Uh, whereas, what do we get in joules for the energy of that photon? Oh, I didn't actually calculate it. Um, but somewhere on like the 10 to the minus 12 or something. Uh, really crazy. But I prefer 2.34, not working with um, exponents. It's a little more straightforward. All right, so the photon energy of this wavelength is 2.34 eV. That's part A. Okay, part B, what is the work function of the metal? Phi. Um, this is the same thing as phi. I know it looks different in this font. Might as well put a thing on it. All right, so what is phi? Uh, we're going to use our um, uh, photoelectric equation. All right, you can also rewrite it. E photon equals uh, K max plus B. All right, so E photon, we just calculated, right, 2.34. K max is Q times V stop, right? K max equals Q times V stop. All right, and if I'm doing this in electron volts, then we get electron volts equals 1 times V stop in volts. Okay, plus phi. All right, so phi is going to be, what, 2.34 minus uh, Q times V stop, which is just going to be 1 times 0 0.59. All right, so I get 2.34 minus 0.59. Let's plug it in, 2.34 minus 0.59, and I get 1.75 eV. All right, so this is our, uh, the work function. Uh, some textbooks even just prefer to call it WF for work function. That's the work function of the metal. And again, for these photoelectric effects, uh, most of these metals are going to have work functions somewhere in the single digits uh, in electron volts. So uh, that's a reasonable value. All right, so that's B. All right, and we have the last one, part C. Okay. Okay, the incident wavelength is changed to a new value. All right, lambda 2, which is unknown. Okay, the stopping potential is now 1.49. Uh, so what is the new wavelength? Okay, so again, we're going to use our, our photoelectric equation. E photon equals K max plus V. Um, so E photon is HC over lambda 2 uh, equals 1 times... Uh, uh, v stop 2, I'll just leave it in uh, symbols for now, plus V. Now uh, we get 1 times, let's see, our V stop 2 is 1.49. And our work function, we just calculated 1.75. Okay, so we going to add 1.49 plus 1.75, 1.49 plus 1.75, and I got 3.24. All right, so HC over lambda 2 equals 3.24, which means lambda 2 equals uh, oh, HC divided by 3.24. Right. So again, this is all in electron volts. So we're going to continue to use this 4.2, 4.14. Sorry, lambda two equals 4.14 times 10 to the minus 15 uh, times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 3.24. Okay, let's plug that in. 1.4 times. 10 to the minus 15 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 3.24 
and we get 3.83 times 10 to the minus 7 meters and that equals, I can convert to nanometers, that's 383 nanometers um, so on the order of hundreds of nanometers, so again that's visible light, again that's uh, about what I would expect, hundreds of nanometers, uh, that's actually UV light, but it's pretty close, could be kind of bluish, um, that's about the order of magnitude that we're looking for. Alright, awesome, so that's it, so that's our, this is like a multi-step multi photoelectric effect, this is actually an example from a previous exam, uh, going through these steps, again, I've done this all in electron volts, uh, you could do this in joules, if you did it in joules, you should get the exact same answer for wavelength, because this is in nanometers, or you could do meters is fine too, um, that should end up being the same uh, for the exam. I will accept both joules or electron volts as long as it's correct and whatever's most comfortable. All right, so please be comfortable in identifying which H you need to use. Um, and then uh, also, in, uh, you shouldn't have to convert between joules and electron volts, but depending on what you're doing, maybe you're going to have to. And so again, you should um, and know how to convert between electron volts and joules as well. Alright, so that's it for this uh, micro lecture. Alright, have a good day.